10 a.m. 2011. We call this to order. Roll call, please. Commission members Brown? Present. Fuller? Present. Capel? Present. Greer? Present. Harris? Present. Vice Chairman Smith? Here. Chairman Vieira? Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. And we will start off with our invocation with Maxine Schultz from the Revealing Truth Church. We're here to accept the guidance of God, the protection of God as we do this work and put it into execution. We're grateful for that presence that's operating in, around and through each of us, and we allow it to be so. Amen. Can you please stay standing, Sandy, if you can lead us in the pledge. Please join me in saluting our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have you seen Thank you. And just before we get into our presentations, I'd like to make a quick introduction. Someone, probably all of you know, I observed uh, Lieutenant Bob Johnson is able to join us today. Thank you for being here, Lieutenant Johnson, uh, with the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. Uh, very instrumental in the uh, crime fighting here in the Alton Valley, so nice to have you here. And with that, we'll start off with our presentations with the LANCAP team update. Sergeant Randy Harris. Thank you. Um, Lieutenant uh, Downton asked me to speak yesterday, so I, I wanted to start off a little bit. I know uh, the LANCAP team has changed quite a bit um, in the last year and a half, last two years. So I want to just talk about the duties uh, that some of you may not be aware of. I know pretty much everybody here is aware of that our, um, our stand for crime-free rental, and that's, that's our main objective with, with LANCAP to work and liaison with our uh, rental properties, our big apartment complexes, and to handle crime problems and nuisance, nuisance issues and things like that in, with our big apartment complexes. Some things that um, some people may not know, but, but um, we have, it kind of started originally with, with that, with the apartment complexes, but we've, we do a lot of narcotics investigations. Um, we do a lot of narcotics investigations within our, the rental properties. And we do a lot of narcotics investigations outside of the rental properties. And I'll get, give you a couple stats in just a minute. But um, that's, we do a lot of that, and I think that's a, um, a big part of uh, the Part 1 crime benefit that, that LANCAP does have. We do, we do hit the narcotics as the sellers up very hard. We also take a lot of uh, – see, a lot of what has changed in the last year and a half or so are, is, um, is when, when the LANCAP – um, it, well, a year and a half ago, LANCAP got involved with the um, ABCFI, Animal Value F Crime Fine Initiative. We started helping out at that, that time as well, which before that time, there was many, obviously, many station teams that were a part of that, but LANCAP wasn't. So we started helping there, too. And that, that, changed, that changed our mission a little bit, just a little bit. And we actually have gotten a lot of help from the, um, the, crime fighting, other, the other crime fighting teams to, to fight our LANCAP mission. To, to use that, to use the AVCFI to attack some of our problem properties, some of our big problem properties. So we've kind of used that as well. But but we uh, but but also what has changed within the last year has been the top team, the um, target oriented policing team, the core teams. They be, they took on the new as you, as you know the new role of um, being a proly search team, compliance check team, and dealing a lot of with a lot of the issues with the, the prol. So when that came into effect, there were some of their um, collateral duties that we kind of absorbed as well. And part of it is we do a lot of the crime stoppers and we tips investigations. Again, that leads back many times to our narcotics um, stuff. Again, I mentioned our partnership with AVCFI. We uh, work heavy with our um, graffiti suppression, with our park suppression as well. That's another collateral duty that we do, we work hard on. And um, we also get a lot of just special, investig special investigations. We're a large team. We have eight deputies, and we have a detective. We have a, a de John Evans, our um, district attorney, that works with us as well for our vertical prosecution issues. So we're a pretty big team, 
And so we get a lot of special projects. Sometimes it comes from the city. Sometimes it comes from the captain. Sometimes it just comes from community uh, people calling the watch commander. When they have special problems, we take on a lot of those special problem issues. Um, so talking about what we do, I think a good way to, to go into that is talk about what happened in 2010 with uh, Landcap, some of our, our highlights. We did over 500 probation and parole searches, um, both mostly in the city of Lancaster, but some were in the city of Palmdale. We uh, arrested over 1,000 um, 1, people. We wrote and served 77 search warrants. Um, that is one of the things that I'm most proud of as far as Landcap because to this point they have averaged between 45 and 55 over the last five years. So we went well above uh, what we normally did, which I think is huge when you consider all these other collateral duties that we took on in the last year and a half. Um, so we have really a um, very hardworking team, a bunch of young deputies um, that have really come together and worked really hard in 2010. And uh, probably my years, 22 years of the Sheriff's Department, I've been on um, six, seven special teams in my career, about, which encompassed about 11 years of my career, so almost about half of my career. And this is the best team I, I've ever been on. These guys are selfless, they're hardworking. Um, we've had, obviously had, as, as you well know, overtime issues, a, a huge lack of overtime. So these guys are not afraid to work on their own, when adjust their schedules, do what it takes. Very hardworking, very hardworking young group of deputies. A um, couple of our highlights in 2010. In the beginning of 2010, uh, Sut, uh, Sunset Ridge apartment complex, huge comp apartment complex. Um, in the beginning of the year, we had a, a big problem with car burglaries. Um, residential burglaries, and even a couple of arsons. The deputies assigned to that complex, uh, two of the land cap deputies, really hit that very hard. Um, actually worked with Jim Capel a little bit with parole as well on that, with probation. We did pro parole, probation sweeps, wrote several search warrants, and uh, stopped, pretty much stopped, um, stopped the burglaries, the arsons, and these residential burglaries, also working with the Berg team as well. But it was a big, big project. They hit it really hard. In December of 2010, um, we had, a, again, what, what we love to do, a lot of these narcotics investigations. We had the biggest uh, narcotics investigation as far as methamphetamine we had uh, is land, in land cap history, and that was 17 pounds. 17-pound um, seizure, 18,000 in cash as well, assault weapon. It was a big, it was a big hit. It was a, net, a Mexican nationalist uh, group, and we hit, him, we hit him really hard. Very proud of that as uh, one of our deputies. In fact, it tied us. It was a, it was a uh, single investigation, but after the investigation was over, we found out it tied to a methamphetamine investigation from the year previous that Landcap was involved in that was a seven-pound seizure. So it was a big seizure a year, year ago. It was um, a related group of Mexican nationals that had the seven pounds. So that was a big investigation. Uh, we worked really hard on it. I think um, one of the biggest things for 2010 what, and land cap is the uh, Park Circle, Circle apartment complex. This is a, a complex that has is, is kind of been the thorn in, in my side as a land cap sergeant that, that's been for about the last year and a half. And, uh, I, you know, uh, we had a lot of help on this. Um, we had all the AVCFI teams. We had a lot of station people helping us on this. But um, land cap really took the lead in this. And there was armed robberies, street robberies. There was about 18 of them, I think, overall. And um, land camp deputies worked it hard. They made two, uh, two single arrests over about a two-week period. And then um, we wrote a three-location search warrant. Again, we had um, the Operation State Street, our, our gang team help us. Several teams helped us. We served these warrants. We had about 40 deputies involved, three locations. And uh, we ended up getting, uh, making uh, eight more arrests. We had um, the weapon used in one of the hit shootings of, of the armed robbery where a, suspect, or a victim was hit, shot, and hit. And it solved 11 of those 18 robberies. And since that time, it's been um, almost three months now, we haven't had a single robbery in that area. And it was plagued with, it was plagued with armed robberies. So um, we're doing a maintenance program right now. We're doing some parole and probation and just a lot of saturation there to try and keep it down. But right now, it's, it's working so far. So that, I think of all the things we did in 2010, that was, um, I think, my, the biggest the one that I'm most proud of. Those guys worked very hard on that land cap. Again, again, we had multiple different people helping us at the station and outside station, but it was a big part of um, land cap, and these guys just putting their, their nose to the streets and working hard and, and solving the problem. Another thing that was, uh, was big was ABC-CFI, our partnership with ABC-CFI. I know everybody, we, 
lot of people involved, many people in this room, but uh, we played a part in that, helping the, the Part 1 crime rate get below 300. So we're proud of that. Um, the future for LANCAP is we want to keep going. We want to keep the pressure on. We want to keep going with these special projects with ABCFI, with the station teams, OSS, the Berg team, and we want to, we want to keep striving forward. Um, we've got a bunch of go-getters and um, ready to do it. So is there any questions? How many deputies are on your land cap team? We have eight deputies, one which are, are um, four two-man cars. We also have a detective that's assigned to us, and the DA, and then one sergeant, myself. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Anybody else? Yeah, I got one question for you, uh, Sergeant. Um, it, it was a big component as far as having your team have one-on-ones with the managers. Are, are you still implementing that, and uh, has it helped? Yes, we, we do. We have a relationship with the managers. And we work on that. That's one of our main our main objectives is to collaborate back and forth with department managers and a management staff. Um, there is there are issues. There's a huge turnaround I found out in these uh, the the business up here of, of uh, Parma Rentals. There's a, a lot of staffs go back and forth and change hands. That's that's something that we have to deal with on a regular basis. But we do we do collaborate with them and um, we get a lot of information from them and we we help them. And sometimes it's just a simple advice. They may call the deputies that are assigned to their complex and, and just get some simple advice. But uh, we do a lot of collaboration. There's a lot of narcotics in the uh, rental properties. And um, they are, I mean, I've, we address these problems in these complexes, even these huge complexes. They can be complex problems involving multiple apartments and gangs and everything else. But when you address it and you put the resources forward, you can make a difference. And um, I, th I think we found that out uh, quite a bit lately, actually between Park Circle and Sunset Ridge. But We've seen in our stats that a lot of the problems are happening at the at the apartments. Do you encourage the management to actually get security for their uh, complexes? I do. I do, and I, I can tell you why. Because we can't be there 24-7. So I think that's a good way to supplement what we do and supplement what the station does. Um, is, is, it, is it a component of, of LANCAP that to get certified LANCAP they have to have uh, security? No. It is not? No. They do have to pass the SEPTED program, which is a federal program. And as part of when we do our management training, that's something we've done a lot in 2010 that we kind of picked up. We haven't, hadn't been on as much, but we've done a lot of management training in 2010, and we talk about these different programs, how to protect the complexes, um, how to, for them to be proactive and what signs to look out for, things like uh, screening, um, your perfect, um, tenant screening before they get them, not to let them in. That's one thing we do teach, not to let some of these bad seeds in and these gang bangers in, and uh, how to actually protect the people that are there now, you know, as well. Just did you steps see they large, can take. I'm sorry. Um, did you see a large difference of the complexes that have security and that don't have security? Well, a lot of uh, a lot of them don't have. Some of our, our they have the roving security, and actually haven't seen a lot. I would like to see some of these huge complexes have the security 24/7, but it just doesn't happen. A lot of them are the roving, the roving type. You know, they'll, they'll contract a company that may have 10 different complexes, you know, as part of what they do. But um, I haven't seen it have a big effect. I do. I, I think it can help though if we keep going that direction. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, consent calendar, did uh, commissioners get a chance to look at that? And is there any questions, points of clarification? Ready to a load on that. And if so, can I get a motion, please? Did you spend a lot of money? So moved. Let's get in line first. A motion and a second. I'll second. Okay. Here, just call for the vote. It's a big call. Thank you. Commission staff presentations, updates, reports, uh, monthly crime stati statistics. Jim Cobalt. Thank you, Chairman Vera. 
Uh, this month's reporting period runs from January 30th through March 5th of 2011. As we take a look at Part 1 crimes, um, the range is from 62, 62 Part 1 crimes at the high to uh, 46 at the low. Um, just from an observation perspective, this is a great range for us to be in. Uh, this really helps us with the, uh, the Part 1 crimes now. Again, I want to remind you about the difference between the way that we look at the data and the way that the Sheriff's Department looks at the data. The Sheriff's Department will include a crime if it's reported within this time period but may not have occurred within this time period. If we're dealing with a, with a specific known time that a crime occurred, then um, we pick that time that the crime occurred. If we're dealing with a time frame, as when somebody left their house and then came home and found it broken into, we'll pick a midpoint in that, that time frame so at least we get in the time or in the time frame that the crime occurred. So uh, these numbers actually occurred within the scope of these weeks, and uh, um, those are good numbers for us. Uh, as you take a look at the arrests, you can see the, uh, the peak arrest period um, for Part 1 crimes was Week 5, uh, and that was not the peak, the peak arrest for total arrests. That was Week 6. Uh, and then you can see the range down there for report numbers. Um, let's go on to the next page and take a look at the reporting districts. Now. These are our reporting districts, and uh, the, the good news about this is if you look up there in the reporting districts, 1121 is not up there, so that's some good progress up there with, with regard to 1121. We do still see 1135 up there with 34, uh, and 1137 is packed in the, the uh, second group uh, with 1126 with 31 Part 1 crimes. Then it drops down to 1127, 1192, and, of course, uh, 1122 and 1134, these reporting districts are on the maps that are in front of you, and you can see where they're physically located. For residence burglary, um, we had some interesting activity over on the east side of town over this reporting period. 1137 and 1135 were particularly uh, populated during that time. I'll just bring up the map and show you. You can see over here uh, between Avenue I and Avenue J from roughly about uh, 20th Street West over to 30th Street, or, excuse me, 20th Street East to 30th Street East, this area right in here, you can see the, the amount of, uh, um, just one second. You can see the amount of residential burglaries over here, and really the larcenies are, are, are not very prevalent in, there, in that area at all, but the residential burglaries really, uh, really took off in that area. We see a rash of them also over here in, just in the 1121-1122 area, um, but these particularly drove these numbers that we see right here. And we had 1121 with 6 and 1132 with 4. Larcenies involving vehicles, 1192 led the way uh, with 6, followed by 1127 and 1137 with 5 and 1134 with 4. Um, <coughs> excuse me. As we look at larcenies involving vehicles during this reporting period, Fords were the uh, most frequent target, followed by Toyota or excuse me, Chevrolet, Toyota, Dodge, Honda, and then other makes had, had uh, single digit or, or an occurrence of one if they were victimized. We uh, keep talking about this at every meeting, and I just wanted to point out to you uh, the, the importance of locking your vehicle. The unlocked vehicles and windows down accounted this Time, or this reporting period for 66% of the, of the auto larcenies, which means we could have cut out two-thirds of our auto larcenies if people would have just locked their car, assuming, obviously, that windows didn't get broken and things like that. But you can, you can take a look down a little bit further, and you can see where windows were shattered. Uh, we only had four occurrences of those. 
So, in fact, I was reading through the reports, and, and the sheriff's department arrested one young lady, uh, and, and she admitted to just trolling the, the neighborhoods looking for unlocked vehicles. And so we know what goes on out there, and, and uh, it's just interesting to, uh, uh, to take a look at and, and to realize the importance of locking your vehicle. And, of course, that's true whether it's, whether it's parked on the street, in a public parking lot, or in your driveway. The, uh, the things that they were after during this reporting period were small electronics, credit cards, clothing, wallets, uh, cash, purses, and so on and so forth down the list. And, of course, if you think your car is, is particularly safe in your driveway, you can see where these are primarily happening. Sixteen of the 32 occurred in residential driveways. Let's take a look at the 52-week trend. And, of course, what this is is we're always on the – when we look at these, these particular uh, graphs, we're always on the right side of it as you look at it. That's the most recent time period in our measure, measurement period. And we look from right to left, looking back 52 weeks. As we take a look at the crimes that are trending up, uh, we can see assault has a uh, rather interesting upward uh, trend to it, even though the last few weeks have been down, and that's good news. If that continues, that should that should level this trend off and, and uh, maybe even start it down. The other good thing about this is as we look at our baseline, our baseline is up here just over the number 16. You can see we actually only had one week where we were over that baseline. So even though we might be trending up a little bit as the data go, uh, as we take a look at it, we're still well below our baseline. Burglary is trending up as well as we take a look at it. And the good news with that is we're still well below the baseline as well. The baseline for burglary is 24.46 per week. And you can see that the, that the green trend line is well below the baseline. Larceny is also uh, trending up. This one's getting a, to be a little bit more of a concern because you can see we're getting close Oops. We're getting close to a convergence of the trend line and the baseline. We want to keep it uh, uh, well below the baseline if we can. And again, Jim, how was the baseline established? Was that a time period? Or? Yeah, we go back to, to 1997 and we calculate um, the, the average per week of Part 1 crimes uh, for each category. And so that gives us our baseline that we're working with. And then we update it every year when the UCR comes out. Thank you. Grand Theft Auto is also uh, showing an upward trend. The good thing about Grand Theft Auto is, again, the baseline is up here at 13.88. You can see where the trend line is. It's down. It just passed over eight per week. Uh, so we're at about eight or nine, maybe ten per week on average right now. So we're still well below our baseline in that as well. Homicide is, is so infrequent for us, it gets real hard to, ch to chart out. So basically it's trending flat right now. Those crimes that are showing a downward trend in the Part 1 category include rape. Um, the thing that, that is positive about this, this uh, downward slope is it's getting us back to our baseline. Our baseline with rape is, a, is about one per week. And you can see the, uh, the uh, downward slope getting us back to that, that uh, baseline. Robbery is also showing a downward slope. We've had a, a little bit of an uptick in the last few weeks, but we're still well below our baseline, which is uh, 6.09 per week on average. And then we have arson as well trending down. We're a little bit over our baseline in arson, but again, arson is such a low-frequency crime for us that, that you're talking about the difference between uh, 1.10 and 1.16. So if you take a look at the maps that are in front of you, if you start with the, the uh, map that – 
If you start with the map that uh, is marked Part 1 Crime Events, January 30th to March 5th in the upper right, you can see the, uh, the way that the crime data lay out across the city during the reporting period. We had 266 events listed on that. Um, <clears throat> and you can also see through the color shading of the, uh, the reporting districts as the, the, the frequency of Part 1 crimes within those reporting districts. Uh, the red have 26 uh, or more Part 1 crimes. Uh, the orange have 16 to 25, the yellow have 11 to 15, uh, the light green have between 1 and 10, and the dark green have 0. Jim, can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, why does this not extend fully out to the city? I know, I know there's a lot of residential on the far west side. Because there was nothing there. Oh, okay. So, like, if you're looking beyond 70th West, I know that there's... You know, a lot of those neighborhoods are right there. During this reporting period, there okay. was nothing. What we do is, the, the, so that we can get as much detail in the area where the crimes are occurring, what we will do is we'll use the, uh, the software to what, what they call zoom to layer of where the crimes are. So if, if it's excluded on here, then there were no crimes that were in that area during the reporting period. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now as we, uh, we move to the next map, which is the spatial trend analysis map, this compares uh, the reporting period, this reporting period that we're dealing with now to the last reporting period we had during your last commission meeting. And you can see with the uh, uh, light red and the dark red areas where we had the relative increase in part one crime activity and in the green areas, we had the relative decrease in part one activity. So the green area is basically where things are going really well for us. The red areas are the areas where during this time period, it might be a signal to us that we want to kind of keep an eye on things. Your next map is the forecast for March 2011. And uh, you can see there that the uh, Right now, the, the areas that are being forecasted for the highest uh, Part 1 crime activity are 1127, 1126, 1121, 1132, 35, and 37. And your last uh, uh, item in front of you is the uh, repeat call locations for this reporting period, January 30th to March 5th. Um, you can see that uh, uh, Walmart jumped back onto the, uh, uh, onto the list. It was not on it, I believe, last, last reporting period. This reporting period, they had 29 calls for service, uh, followed by, obviously, uh, Quartz Hill, or uh, excuse me, Antelope Valley Hospital led the way with 53, but again, the oftentimes things walk through the front door in the hospital and they have to report them. So that explains, and, and uh, normally they come out on top for us. Uh, the third uh, address is Quartz Hill High School with 22 calls. Um, the, the next spot also with 22 calls is the Rancho Mirage Mobile Home Park, followed by Antelope Valley High School. And then we had an intersection of Challenger Way and Avenue J, uh, another intersection of Division and J, another intersection of Sierra Highway and Avenue M, another intersection of 10th Street West and Avenue I, followed by the Briarwood Mobile Home Estates with 16 calls, the Hacienda Mobile Home Park with 16 calls, another intersection, 20th Street East and Avenue J, uh, Challenger Way and Avenue K, Arbor Court Apartments, and then finally the uh, Beechwood Manor Apartments. That pretty much concludes the Part 1 crime descriptions, the forecast, and the, uh, um, the call for service. While we're on that, are there any questions? 
I'm wondering about that uh, Quartz Hill High School and AV High School. Why would there be a higher frequency? Could be a lot of schools? reasons. Could be could be alarms going off at the school. Could be. Um, I, I I mean, it's in the data. We can find that out if we need to. Since they have uh, uh, deputies assigned to them, generally their activity is not included in the call data. Uh, so a lot of times things like that in, in involve like the alarms set up at nighttime or going off at nighttime and those kinds of things. Thank you. And finally, the uh, the last piece of data that, that I wanted to share is what's going on with our Antelope Valley Community Youth Court. Um, so far in 2011, we've had 32 cases. We've had 25 that have come over in February. Uh, we have a variety of cases pending and in process and everything else. The big issue that I want to that I want to extend to the uh, to the commissioners is on the uh, 15th at 4 p.m. We're going to have a, a completion ceremony. There'll be roughly about 15 uh, between 10 and 15 um, of the uh, folks that were referred to us or the youth that were referred to us that have completed their sentence and have done a good job with it, and we're going to recognize them with a ceremony. Um, if if it's that's an open time on your calendar, we'd sure love to have you there. I know Dr. Vieira has uh, said that he would he would be present, but uh, uh, it would be great to have any members of the commission there as well. We'll have a location. Taking, is that taking place here in the uh, yes yes in the council chambers. Thank you. Arrest statistics, Sergeant Kroger. Okay, I'll briefly go over our arrest stats for uh, February, uh, and then I'll uh, address a question that was posed by uh, Commissioner Gappell uh, in the last session. Uh, first, we'll uh, cover our uh, Part 1 activity uh, for February. Uh, we were uh, slightly down from the month of January, uh, minus 15 arrests. Uh, we had 117 in January, 102 for the uh, month of February. Um, okay, the, uh, we did have an increase in our uh, burglary arrest for the uh, month of February. We had a total of uh, 43 burglary arrests, which was huge. Um, and I think most of that was addressing that area. Uh, on the east side of town, where uh, Jim had pointed out, we had an increase in burglaries. Again, our burglary team, uh, suppression team was on top of that and uh, really uh, got on that really quick and uh, solved a number of those crimes in that area and uh, also recovered a uh, significant amount of uh, stolen property in that area. And our uh, part two arrests for uh, uh, the month of February were also down slightly from January. Um, no uh, big areas of concern in our uh, part two arrest there. We did have a slight uh, decrease in our, our, our uh, narcotics arrest during that period, but nothing, uh, nothing major. Yeah. 
in our uh, arrest in uh, comparison to uh, the other stations. Uh, again, uh, part one arrest, uh, it looks like we came out on top for part one arrest compared to the other stations. And uh, 901 part two arrest, uh, slightly behind Century Station at 925, uh, ahead of the other stations we compared to. And the, uh, this will uh, compare our, uh, our arrests for this, this year compared to uh, last year. We are uh, slightly down year to date from where we were this time uh, last year. Our part one arrests are down approximately 11% from where we were last year at this time. And our part two arrests are down about 12.5% from where we were this, this time last year. Um, and uh, speaking with them, that's pretty consistent with what we're showing in our uh, crime statistics as well. Uh, last meeting, uh, Commissioner Gappell uh, asked us, uh, the, uh, the impact of the NRPs on our arrest stats. Um, unfortunately, I can't answer that question for you uh, because the, uh, there's a little flaw in our system which prevents us from pulling those numbers out. Uh, we're unable to get the, uh, the parole, probation, or the NRP as far as our arrest stats go. That's a program that's currently being addressed by our department so that we can readily have those numbers available to you. Um, I don't know the time frame on when that's going to be available, but right now the only way we can get those is by hand searching the arrest for each month to provide you with those numbers. Any other questions? Now from the California Highway Patrol update. Good morning, Lieutenant Schaefer for Captain Hoos. Captain Hoos was not able to be here this morning, so he asked if I'd step in and share some of our statistics for last month in February. Um, it's kind of a mix of, of, of good and bad. Our uh, fatal accidents a year to date, um, and also persons killed year to date, is down 33%, which is uh, good news. However, total accidents are up 8% and uh, DUI PCF accidents are up 15%, although our, as I stated, our fatal, our fatal accidents are down. Um, our, uh, our arrests are down 4.6% year to date. Um, however, our, our seatbelt violations are up 13.7%, which is, which is good news also. We're, we're concentrating on that area with our seatbelt uh, enforcement. As you know, we have our uh, DOI corridor, which we received, and uh, it's in conjunction with Antelope Valley, I mean Antelope Valley and uh, Newhall CHP. Covers all the way from the five on the 14, all the way up here to the uh, county line. Yeah, and uh, because of uh, budgetary constraints, we weren't able to to do anything with that. They they withheld those funds. We just received word last month that uh, those funds have been released. So that's good news. So we're going to start. Um, deploying officers on the 14 for the DOI corridor, which you, hopefully you'll see an increased uh, patrol presence uh, on, on, on the 14 freeway, uh, directly uh, um, looking for DUI drivers on that stretch of highway. We have developed a task force, uh, which is comprised of community members. We've met last month, uh, or actually a couple months ago, and we're going to meet again at the end of this month to discuss some of the goals of this task force. So that's, that's good news that those funds have been released. Um, <clears throat> recently, also, the uh, department has revised its strategic plan and, uh, for 2011 to, through 2015. As a result, each area office is um, required to come up with uh, strategies to support that plan. Some of the strategies here in the Antelope Valley are Obviously, again, uh, increasing our efforts to combat DUI, seatbelt, and uh, speed. Those are, the, those are the main factors where we're getting the fatalities in, um, in the area. And so our efforts, again, will be um, increased DUI presence not only on the 14 with our grant, but we're going to send uh, officers out into the county areas to saturate the county areas for DUI patrols. And also included this... Uh, in this particular strategic plan, which wasn't in the last one, was uh, uh, cell phone usage. I just wrote 
and so we're going to combat individuals on their cell phones, texting, and that also includes the distracted driving. So uh, um, some, some good things that we're planning on doing here to, uh, to bring those numbers even further down. So thank you. Thank you. I, I had assumed initially that the DUI increase was attributed to the grant, but evidently that's not the case at this yeah. point anyway. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, comments? No? District Attorney update, uh, Steve Franklin, Deputy District Attorney. Um, <clears throat> for the, uh, the complaints filed that uh, for February in Antelope Valley, which uh, obviously encompasses more than Lancaster, as you know, there was uh, 649 felony complaints filed. So to per put that in perspective, um, that's the out of all of LA County, that's the uh, third largest, with Compton being the largest, with 1,035 complaints filed, in Norwalk, with uh, second, with 738. Uh, complaints filed and then, as I indicated uh, we were third with uh, 649 as for misdemeanors in February we filed 1608 again to put that in perspective that's fourth within all of uh, LA County uh, the leading was uh, actually West Covina with uh, 2,193, then East LA with 2,031, Compton 1,740, and then uh, uh, Antelope Valley, as I indicated, with 1,608. Um, and uh, finally, I would uh, compliment Sergeant Harris on the uh, on the land cap uh, program. I know our DA John Evans, who's assigned to that, is very busy and and works hand in hand with those deputies that are assigned to that. And personally, I think it's a very valuable uh, program, and I think they do make a dent uh, in the crime up here. So I think that that's a very valuable resource. Um, Barring any questions, that would conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. Now, a report on our neighborhood impact program. Uh, Commissioner Harris. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> we are well on our way to establishing a, a sports league among the neighborhood homes, and so we're really excited about that. We've established a, a league office. Each one of the homes is going to have a team, and then we're going to play each other. And we're going to be doing that at all of the different um, locations where there is a high school or a, another uh, gym where we can, that we can use their facility. The kids are going to have T-shirts. Each one of the teams has a mascot, and we're going to roll it out with basketball from April through June, and then at the end of June, we're going to have an award um, ceremony. So we're really um, excited about this because all of the homes are going to be working together uh, in conjunction with each other. The other thing uh, that has happened is Antelope Valley Partners for Health, they had a ladies' night out. They had it at the Paiute um, area. They've had it at Trend, and it was very successful. What they did with the mommies or, or the um, – they called it Mommy's Night Out or Ladies' Night Out. They took care of the kids, but they had a domestic violence uh, class. And so they were teaching the ladies, you know, here's what you look for. Here's the things that you don't want to do. These are the things that lead up to uh, being assaulted uh, by someone. And so they did. They had a presentation, and then they played games. And my understanding is that the ladies didn't want to go home um, after that. So they stayed much, much later than the, the two hours that, that this encompassed. So I think um, that was very well done on, on the part of Antelope Valley uh, Partners for Health. This last week, um, at, in the Trent area, we had six families who came, and they planted the seeds for uh, the community garden that we have. So what we're going to do is uh, make sure that the, the seeds, you know, start growing, take care of them. We're keeping them there at the house, and then in April, they'll be able to go out and uh, plant the garden. Also, all the families will go out together 
and we're showing them how to grow their own food. And it doesn't seem like there's a lot of families, you know, that are involved, but you, you start small. And it's all about the relationships. At the, at the Paiute House, I would say that they've got more activities in terms of, you know, uh, they're open every single day, as well as some of the other houses are open every day, you know, for the kids. But we start with the kids. Then we go to um, junior high and high school, and then we go to the adults. And this is a process that takes time. In Paiute, we've been there for seven years already. And so the, it's, it's a progression of relationships, and we're here for the long haul. If it takes 40 years, then that's what we're going to do. And the idea establish relationships with the people in the community. What can we do to help? And so um, we're, we're starting with that, so we're very excited. Um, with um, the uh, the garden, and we'll see how that whole thing um, pans out. And I th think um, that that is uh, the end of the presentation. We have a lot of long-range plans that we're that we're going to do. For example, at the Trent House, we are going to have the. Um, um, as Lee mentioned, I think last month, we're, we will have the Neighborhood Watch presentation as well as a Disaster Preparedness presentation as well as uh, Neighborhood Impact, letting them know what it is that um, they can expect and, and how it is that maybe they can uh, take care of the community a little bit better, and then that will kind of go to all of the other homes. And of course, you know, I'll start ramping up for what we do every fall, which is painting the homes in the neighborhoods um, at no charge um, to the residents. And so this year, we will not only have trend, but we'll have the other communities um, as well involved. And so we'll be painting those, painting Mariposa School, uh, the entire school. And so we're very excited about that because this is a relationship, not only with the residents of the community, but it's also a relationship with the schools the relationship that we have with the city. And so all of us, I think, working together um, to try to help these communities to get on the right track. I, I can't think of anything else that um, is more beneficial and that I would rather be uh, a, a part of and, and working on. So thank you. Well, and thank you for all the work that you do and the positive impact that you have in our neighborhoods and here in the city. Commissioner Harris, on behalf of the uh, Lancaster City Council, I'd like to thank you for everything that you do. It's just a great work. Thank you. You're welcome. And, you know, I, I um, accept those thanks on behalf of everyone who's working with um, Neighborhood Impact. And, again, this whole effort was started by um, another commissioner who's no longer here, and that was Chris Johnson. He's the one who spearheaded this whole thing. And if you don't think that one person can make a difference, um, you're wrong. It you just takes one person, and he drives by a neighborhood and says, I think we can make a difference there, mobilizes his church, mobilizes other churches, and now you've got the faith-based community saying, you know what, we have been so long trying to help the people within the church, and we haven't gone out into the community, and so that's what we need to be doing. And so it just took one person to do that. And so now we've got all these different teams, you know, in all the different homes. So anyway, we're just... I'm just a small part. Thank you very much, though. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can I just comment on that, too? It works perfectly for the, some of the mission we have from within the city here with our public safety programs and our community outreach. It's a, it's a perfect venue for us to be able to present that. And we appreciate the ability to come into those neighborhoods and, and introduce folks to the different programs and things that we want to get the community involved in in those areas. Um, Don and I really enjoyed the meeting with everyone, all the stakeholders. And I'm, we're looking forward to working with each one of the neighborhood impact homes to, to get those things moving. Okay. A lot of great work being done. And Lee, did you want to just continue with the business watch subcommittee update? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to. Okay, tentative schedule now for the subcommittee is March 22nd at Lowe's. Avenue K. They canceled the last meeting. They had a corporate issue, and so they are going to do a similar format to what we did with Walmart, where they're going to bring their regional folks and all their district managers into the meeting. Um, to be quite frank with you, the local store is anxious to have this meeting as they, are, they want to address some issues they're having and present that to their management folks. Um, I'd also, I'm going to work on the uh, other home supply store here locally here and trying to set up schedule something with them as well and then 
based on where the committee wants to go from there, we'll move forward with that. Also, um, Megan and Marlene have worked closely with the Boulevard Association and our local businesses here on the Boulevard immediately and attending their meetings as far as and, and really working on uh, growing that business watch aspect of it is downtown. So we would, you know, we're not just working in, in partnership with some of these larger retail stores. We're also working with our local business people here to see how we can work together to improve the situations they're in. Do we have a time on the March 22nd? That would be up to you as what's convenient for the commission. They said they would make it available. It is an administrative day for them at their store. It's a regular meeting they have once a month. They are inviting their area people to it, but it's an all-day meeting. So say anywhere we'd want to incorporate that in, I would say anywhere between 9 and 3 o'clock, which is whatever is at, uh, at your leisure, we can set that time with them. Public safety update, Mr. Jerico. Okay, um, just some things that are coming out of that, and it directly correlates to a uh, monthly meeting we have with our core deputies along with our um, representatives from our different crime impact teams here locally. You know, Sergeant Harris is very humble about the work that Landcap's doing, as well as some of the things that were featured today with uh, Sergeant Mechanic and the burglary team and some of the things that Kent touched on. The station is just doing amazing things with, with diminished... Um, issues within their own department they're dealing with here for the city is they've really our guys are dedicated and they're working their tails off out of that meeting I think it's really good because it gives us the ability to sit in a room in a similar format that uh, Lieutenant Johnson has done with AVCFI and discuss what focus on what the issues are and how we want to address them throughout the community Jim does a uh, ComStat presentation with the individual core deputies who are utilizing information from that database now to impact issues in those different areas of the city they're responsible for. I think the, the other part of that is, is that we're, we're going to continue in that format every month and we address it and then we set priorities based on that meeting. Also for us, we're in the process of putting together our next scheduled landlord training meeting with uh, Sergeant Harris and his team. And I would encourage, if you have an opportunity to come in for some of those presentations that are involved in that, and that's... And, to, to put that in perspective is we really work closely with the property management companies or individual landlords how to be responsible property owners, okay, and how to be responsible managers and how to best manage their property that's conducive both for them as a business opportunity to make their business grow and, and be more resourceful and also for us from a crime-fighting aspect and quality of life issues. And everything we talk about in there is related to that, so we want to make them gain expertise on how to deal with issues that they identify as problematic in their properties. And, and it's a two-day thing, and we go through a certification with their SEPTED and all the things that we bring forward. Um, there's a local um, attorney, civil attorney, that comes in and talks to them specifically about landlord-tenant issues, landlord rights, tenants rights, and it's very informative. Um, so that we're, we have ramped that up to where we try and do a class every three months, and we've had very good participation. Also, our focus... Um, is uh, where we want to schedule our Area 2 meeting with our core meeting with our neighborhood watch groups. Um, we're probably going to do something here, hopefully at the end of this month or early next month for Area 2. And I'll get you a, a date and time for that, and I'll make sure it's updated on your commission calendars. Then uh, lastly, I, I think, you know, we're going to talk. Uh, the Berg team was amazing over this period. I, I want to say Mark Mechanic and, and his guys are, are really active. <laughs> and fortunately for us, we the, the station's been very, very stingy with investigative overtime and done a great job of managing a fund that we've set aside for them for these special cases. We utilized some of that um, over this last time period that I think had some really great results. And so I think... Statistically, we should trend down somewhat in that category. I know it's a concern whenever we start to see that residential burglary spike. I have complete confidence that that will not be the case at our next presentation. So we're going to see some results of their work. And again, um, I, I work the poor girls, I work them to death. I probably drive them crazy. But Marlene handles, you know, they're handling other things beyond just the scope of um, neighborhood watch and business watch and those things, and they're doing a fine job. So, And just so you know, I want to volunteer the city manager to coach one of those teams. <laughs> I'll win. 
we were actually discussing it, but basketball is not really our thing. So when we move on to the next group, because I'm some certain people in the room are not going to have choices. There's one, probably the new new folks that are showing up, but uh, we're looking forward to being part of that too as well. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Lee, could you update us on the uh, Wheaton Seed Program with the uh, grant with the city with that? Well, actually, events? Janie is going to step up here at some point. We have uh, something that she's going to present to you that's taking place here in the near future. Um, that program is growing. Uh, I have to tell you that I would like to at some point be able to bring you guys over to look at the office that Janie and her people have done an immense amount of work over over on Cedar, talk about the things on Howard, talk working on reentry issues and job training and things for ex-offenders and their, their program is doing very well, okay? And I, we're really proud of it and be a part of it. But, but um, I, wanna, I don't want to steal from her. I'm going to have her get up and talk about it here shortly. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Britt, I have to say that I was remiss on the public business from the floor agendized items. I did not call on that. So do we have any uh, public business from the floor agendized? We have one speaker card, Lyle Talbot. Mr. Talbot? Thank you. Morning. Uh, I got a new knee on Valentine's Day and a whole new attitude and a weapon. <laughs> new weapon. <laughs> but uh, I was sitting on my patio last week and over the weekend, and this last month meeting was being replayed, and someone said, get in here, Lyle. So I got in here just in time to hear uh, Chairman Vieira say, Lyle, in case you're listening, that's what we've done about this. And it's the same issue I've brought before you the last two months in a row. It's about an assault by a city official on a local citizen. Uh, so I didn't hear the explanation, and I'm not very good on finding replay. So could you explain what you told the group well, that, at the end of the that last meeting? actually wasn't me who made that comment. That actually, me, that actually wasn't me that made that comment. Um, so I'm not sure which commissioner may have said that. That may have been my comment. Uh, my question was to people from LA County Sheriff's Department, and I also asked if the district attorney's office was a, was aware of this situation that you brought up a couple times. And they both reported that they were aware of it. I see. Okay, they are aware of it. Uh, when it comes to the uh, business watch, you know, you can't hardly go into a business nowadays without being videoed or... Uh, having someone come up and say, can we help you, which is a key to the fact that they're checking on you. A lot of video cams around, and that 24-hour fitness gym, I would imagine had quite a few installed over the years. And is there any videos of the incident that I refer to all the time? And if so, can the public see them, make their own judgment, or do we have to rely on the analysis by our sheriff's department? I'm not aware of any particular uh, videos that... Uh, well, I believe I read in the newspaper that uh, a sheriff official said, yes, we've seen some and they were inconclusive. Mr. That's Beer. an opinion by the sheriff's department. i just curious, is there anything that the public might want to see and might have a different opinion, that's all. Yeah, again, I don't know uh, specifically what may be out there, but, I, but this isn't the source to... <laughs> acquire that type of information we don't we don't we don't have that we don't have that video that film and you'd have to, to, to pursue another avenue for that okay thank you you're welcome is there any other non agendas we request any person who would like to address the Criminal Justice Commission on non-agendized matters to complete a speaker card. You will find speaker cards on the back table of the council chambers. Additionally, we respectfully request that you fill the cards out completely and print as clearly as possible so that if necessary, the commission or city staff will be able to direct to contact you either by phone or mail. Individual speakers are limited to three minutes each. When you approach the podium, please notice there are three lights. The green light comes on when you begin, the yellow light will come on when you have 30 seconds remaining, and the red light will come on when your three minutes are up. We ask that you be considerate of the allotted time to allow other speakers to have their three minutes as well.
Following this procedure will allow for a smooth and timely process for the Commission meeting and we appreciate your cooperation. State law prohibits the Criminal Justice Commission from taking action on items not on the agenda and your matter will be referred to staff. David Aber. Morning, Commission, uh, staff, and citizens. Um, you may not be able to take action, but uh, I want to make a record just the same. Um, with respect to the incident uh, at the 24-hour fitness gym where I was attacked by the mayor, um, I'm curious to the status. I uh, spoke with Mr. Franklin and the lieutenant here. Um, video uh, footage of the Channel 7 News where the mayor himself actually confessed to the crime. He admits he committed a battery on me, and that's uh, all documented. The lieutenant uh, mentions that there's video. Well, I think people would like to see that video so we could get to the bottom of what took place. It's, we're coming up on a six-month date, which is crucial to any litigation that may be going forward and a claim against the city. Um, I've been watching the political scene for most of my life, a good 40 plus years. Never heard of a city official or a senator or a governor or a president attacking a citizen. It's unacceptable and accountability is a must. Um, there were witnesses that day. The problem with the witnesses coming forward is the fact that uh, neither the sheriff's department or the district attorney chooses to protect the witnesses from repercussions by the mayor. If somebody can do that, I'm sure there's a few witnesses. The incident took place by the racquetball courts. I'm sure if they went back and checked, they could find out who might have been on those racquetball courts since you have to sign in and get those racquetball courts. It's probably a good half a dozen witnesses. There's good video footage. So, you know, I think it's about time we get to the bottom of this situation. And if this body can't at least this record's being made, and therefore, you know, we can go somewhere. Um, this is unacceptable behavior. None of you people on this commission are attacking citizens. None of the staff have attacked anybody. It's unacceptable. In the beginning, I requested four hours after the incident a simple apology. Apparently, that's not forthcoming. Uh, having said that, I'm going to leave us with a couple things. A violation against Human rights anywhere is the business of free people everywhere. That's Ronald Reagan, 1986. Uh, if there's any questions or clarity that anybody needs, uh, great. If Mr. Franklin or the lieutenant has any updates on the status of this, they can free to air it in public or they can both call me. They, they both know where to find me. Uh, in closing, I'd like to take my last 10 seconds. Uh, we lost... Rabbi Hoffman this last week uh, here in town. So if we could just take these last few seconds to... Uh... Thank you. Janie Hodge. Good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you for allowing me to come and give you an update on what we're doing at Weed and See. Um, we're having a block party. It will be Saturday. Um, this is a combination of what we requested the funds for Weed and Seed. We said we would go into our target area and we would build a relationship. The relationship will follow a, um, I guess you'd call it a sweep, where parole and probation and the sheriff go in and they do their job in the community. And then we follow with uh, the resources that come in. Um, there has been work done in the community that we're going. It is actually uh, the Banal track, which is at the 44400 block of Banal. It will be Saturday. It will be from 10 to 3 p.m. We have planned uh, entertainment. We have a jumper for the kids. We have uh, speakers that will come out. We will bring resources from within the community. Uh, the PIFS people from DPSS will be there. Uh, Grace Resource will do the food and Paving the Way will bring resources for domestic violence, for our reentry program, and we've done a survey to uh, kind of get an idea of what the community feels their needs are, what they would like to see, and those are the things 
things that we would like to do to build relationship. The sheriffs will be there, parole will be there, and our goal is to build a relationship within our community, same as uh, Commissioner Harris was speaking on. So we're all on that same level of support where we're going into the community and bring resources. The other thing I'd like to tell you about is our reentry program. We will have our third graduation. This one is very special because this year the parole uh, meetings were held at the parole center. Well, this year, starting in January, we started having them at the Paving the Way facility. From that separation, we started to do things with Tarzana Treatment Center to address the drug and issue problems that they may have. We brought aboard a um, clinical therapist to talk about family issues that works with family and children. So there's a lot of dynamic that is being brought forth since it's left the parole office and come to paving the way and we have um, we started with 25 and we have a solid 17 that will be graduating and we hope that you guys will be able to come and view that graduation and it's set for April 22nd and it will be at Tarzana treatment I'll come back at the next meeting and give you the exact time and date and I hope that you guys will be able to come out we have also took it to another level we because of weed and seed we were also given the project safe neighborhood grant with that grant we chose to go about um, soliciting young ladies that are being affected by gang um, either influenced through peer pressure or influenced because of family whatever that is and we wanted to bring it into the school district so I met with the chairman and um, he thought it was a positive thing where we're doing prevention and intervention with young ladies from middle school to high school age. So our goal is to go into and bring information and also glean information as to what their stressors are, what kinds of things are going on, and see how we can help to impact and make a change. My vision was that if you want to get to the side of a male, then you should talk to the female side. So if we have issues with gangs, we probably should talk to the young ladies and do some preventive work there. Um, I'm excited about the work that's going on. We have some things with green jobs training so that we can transition the guys from parole to jobs, maybe back in the school. We've developed a relationship with ABC that is totally awesome, and I'm excited about the work we're doing. Thank you. Any questions? I'm going to leave some flyers, so in case you want to, I spoke too fast and you want to know where it is, I'm going to leave them up there, and you guys, please come by. Thank you very much. I do have one more, uh, David Paul. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, good morning. Last night, the mayor announced the formation of the Human uh, Relations Tapestry Commission, which I will be a part of. And uh, I just want to reiterate how uh, inspired I am when I come here to see what's going on. Uh, Commissioner Harris, that is the key, to have people involved, to have them have a sense. I like to say that there is no greater joy in life than to love and respect the law, and that just means that people feel included, and that's uh, the mandate of the Tapestry Commission, as I understand it, to, to have people uh, feel connected, and all these things that go on, uh, I'm privileged to hear so that I can bring that to the Commission uh, the tapestry group and uh, let them know what's going on and uh, see if we can support you. There's a lot to do. You know, uh, we're tasked with bringing people together at a time when there's more stressors pulling us apart than ever, and uh, that's quite a challenge. And I, I just want to make sure that we do our part uh, to have an impact. You know. Uh, there's been times in my life when I've been counseling someone or in a job-related situation, a disciplinary action, and I talk about my background uh, working in jail and prison. And uh, it always startles me when they tell me I, I knew I could smell the pig on you. And I always thought, well, hey, that, that, thank you. But, um, you know, just to be a part, just to be a part of what works is the main thing. And so uh, I appreciate what you do, and uh, I can't tell you how excited I am to be part of the community working on uh, making this a better place for everyone. So uh, thank you, and if you have any uh, input, uh, I'd like to talk to you, you know, about I want to come see what you're doing, Commissioner. Uh, 
There's a lot of people I know that are outside the faith-based community. There are a lot of people that don't love and respect the law. And those are the ones that I think are, are most uh, able to be helped by the Tapestry Commission. You know, that, that's the place to bring them in and incorporate them in and all these other programs. But it, it's exciting, and there's another tool available. And uh, I just want to work together and, and, and spread the joy. Thank you. Thank you, and we appreciate your involvement. Commissioner, comments? Any comments in closing? Yeah, I just have a, I guess it's more of a comment question. Um, really appreciate hearing the input from the public. The last couple of months I've been a little bit confused on, uh, we've had speakers on agendized items, and I haven't been able to identify the agenda item that we're discussing. So, I mean, non-agendized is obviously open for anything. Is there a way to identify if someone is saying they're speaking an agendized item, that item, so that we could appropriately identify it? When they fill out the speaker card, they are writing the agenda item that they are speaking on. Um, I have to take their word for it. Right. No, I understand that. But maybe we should say which item they're going to be talking about so we can okay. see the relevance of it to that okay. item. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, have a comment. Um, as a member of the subcommittee, the gang ordinance um, that we've been working on, we would like to, um, we've been working on the proposal. Um, we would like as a subcommittee to, before we give that proposal to the city council, we would like to hear from the public. So we were asking if we could put that on the agenda next month so that we can hear views from the public. Once we hear from the public, we'll give a proposal to the, to the commission here. And then the following month in June, we would give that to the city council. So if we can get that put on the agenda next month. Sure. We can put that on the 13th of April, which would be our next meeting. Uh, I have uh, just a couple comments. Uh, one, uh, I, I failed to uh, make a, sp a specific uh, thank you to uh, uh, Sergeant Harrison and his report and his land cap team. Obviously, with the reduction in Part 1 crimes, uh, clearly LA County Sheriff's Department and these special teams have played a significant role in that. And the report was very, very encouraging today to hear that. Thank you again. Uh, my other comment uh, has to do with, uh, uh, I guess, the concern brought up by Lyle Talbot again today and some of the comments by Mr. Abbott. Uh, I asked the question at the last meeting because this item had been brought up a couple times, even though I didn't believe it was agendized, and it had been brought up on more than one occasion. And then again today, both by Lyle and by, uh, by Mr. Aber, um, I think I don't know anything about the merits of the case. Um, the fact that there doesn't appear to be anything happening with it suggests to me that maybe those are in question, um, way more so than whether or not uh, a prosecutorial team with uh, Steve Cooley's office at the top of it or a department like LA County Sheriff's Department with Lee Baca if you believe that either of those individuals or their departments in Southern California are afraid to tackle thorny issues or uh, people in positions of authority, whether it be at the city level, county, or state, or just as private individuals, I would strongly disagree with you. All you have to do is watch the news on a regular basis, and you will see the kind of people that they are not afraid to prosecute. So if there's not something happening with this matter, rather than bring it up uh, continually at the meetings, especially when it's not an agendized item, I'd ask you to, you know, consider your case again. Um, that's my only comment about that. Hearing no other comments, Mr. Yes. Chairman. Yes. Um, last night at the City Council meeting, the uh, City Council uh, asked the Criminal Justice Commission to take up a hearing on the massage parlors that are in the valley. So if you could add that to the agenda, I would appreciate it. We'll put it on the 13th. I believe each of you have a copy of a draft ordinance. Uh, if you'd like, just let me know. I can email it to you if you'd rather have it electronically. And if you want the version that was presented to council as well, let me know. Uh, I have a question for you. Um, when you say that for the uh, commission to consider the item, is that something you're going to ask the commission to have uh, public input on? Absolutely. We'd like you to uh, review it, you know, toss it around, find out if there's any holes in it, and uh, look at it and make any recommendations that you might have. Yes. 
Um, the ordinance was originally adopted in, I believe, 2007. And uh, what the council would like you to look at is revisions that were suggested by staff that were man that were required by state law changes, and that have come from either code enforcement or the sheriff's department. Uh, to look at those and also, as the councilman uh, Chris said, to take input as well, too. So it's a revision to an existing ordinance that you have before you. And I believe, Britt, the changes are in bold. Uh, the one, the, if, if not, we'll send you the copy with the changes that were made in bold. Thank you. Any other comments, statements? Hearing none, this meeting stands adjourned at 11.20, and we'll, the next meeting uh, scheduled for the 13th of April, 10 a.m.